Hi, today I want to show you the biggest mistake that you can do in Toddle that can potentially cost you thousands and thousands of dollars that you absolutely don't want to do. And this is exposing your AI API keys. And I've seen this happen a lot of times in all no code visual development tools, just because, you know, the developers or the people using those tools don't really understand the fundamentals of API security. And it's very important to understand those fundamentals of API security, that you don't get a $5,000 or $10,000 invoice for compromised API keys. This is very important and we've got to talk about this topic and I want to show you today how you can protect yourself from those things of happening. But first, let me start by making an implementation that I've seen a lot of times people do and that is absolutely 100% dangerous and that is, um, you know, the precondition that, that, that is like the start of a disaster in, in, your, in your SaaS. So I just want to show you this big mistake so that you're not doing it. And while doing that, I'm exposing my API key too. So I'm now at an AI company. This, you can use ChatGPT. I used Hyperbolic just because they're my friends and they gave me some credits. But let's go an API in here, right? And, you know, now I would just take that curl, right? Um, you know, usually if I were to put this in ChatGPT, I would say, ChatGPT, what do I have to do, right? And, you know, one example that I would do is I probably would copy this URL. I would go to Toddle, right? I would create a new API in here, right? I would call this AI. I would remove autofetch. I would make this a post, right? Because it's saying in here, it's a, it's a post. I would put that URL in here, boom. I would now add my body, right? I would go in here and I would copy this object with that, with that prompt data for that API. And I would just paste it in here. Oh, that's, I would go to JSON formatter. I would put that in here. I would format it. Oh. Oh, the top one is missing. I would format that. I would copy that JSON. Here you go. I would paste it in here. Or it's still not working. Come on, need another one. JSON formatter. Let's go on any JSON. I only go to the bad one. Uh, JSON formatter, best JSON formatter. That's the good one. Here you go. Um, let's validate. Oh, okay, there are some issues. Okay, uh, let's go in here. I need to add that. I didn't copy it properly. Validate. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's just copy that and put it to ChatGBT. Like, here you go. Let's go to clot. You know, I would say fix JSON. Put that JSON in there. It will fix the JSON, make it JSON, so there are no formatting issues in there. Um, there you go. I would have that JSON, right? That, 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 that That's the data that I want to pass on to that API. I would paste it in here in Toddle, right? I would have that. I would now have the prompt in here. Let's hard code that prompt for now. Let's say uh, monkey. And I got my steps. I got my number. I got those things. So that's all good, right? Um, I got that API in here, um, and then I want to go to um, authentication. <clears throat> and this is no user authentication, so I would add a header in here, right? And we look at that API call again. This is the, the big mistake people would do. We would do authentication, uh, authorization. We'll paste that in here, right? And then we'll we'll go in here and we'll take that API key. We'll copy that API key and we'll put that in here, right? So now we'll close this. And because it says, you know, like here proxy and it's like goes through total server, we think it's secure. Um, and now we would just build our AI image generator. So let's add a form in here, right? And in that form, I'll add a text area for that prompt and I'll add an image for that preview. So let's make this width. 25 frame. Here you go. That text error will be 100%. 
just like that. And we'll go in here, background color will be gray 50. And that text color will be some something black. And then we'll make that image on top of here. And we'll give that image rounded borders, border 15 pixels. And we'll go in that form and we give it one RAM gap. So we got like a simple thing. We'll create a variable called image. They'll be empty. And then we go on this image here and we go to source. We'll bind it to that image variable, right? And then we also show and hide this based on image size uh, greater than zero. So we'll only show it if it's greater than zero. So now it's, uh, it's hidden or it should be hidden. Yeah, it's hidden as you can see. So we got that. And then I would create my variable, another one called prompt. They'll be starting at empty. I'll go in that text area and I bind it to my prompt variable. So I put in my variable monkey on a rocket Disney style, right? Oh, on a rocket, rocket Disney, Disney style, Disney style. Here you go. We'll go in here on the API, right? We'll set that up real quick, a little AI generator. We'll go on FX and we'll put the prompt with the variable. We we'll, can remove the string. So now we got our prompt, right? And now we'll be able to really quick click, click on auto fetch to like run this API. It's loading right now. It can take a few seconds. Make sure to turn off auto fetch. Otherwise you're going to get a big invoice because auto fetch loads aggressively. And now I got like base 64 of that image back, right? So now I made that API, right? So I got that image, it's a PNG. So let's really quick ask Claude how to show an base 64 string for an PNG as an image SRC in HTML. I know how to do it, but I forgot how to do it. So let's see, it is like the slash, yeah, here you go. So we'll do your base 64 string here. So we'll just copy that. And we'll go to that image. And we'll go on source. I'll add concatenate. And I'll be concatenating this with the string of that image, right? And that will be when I go to my API and that API in here is on success. So the API has finished, right? I want to go in here on um, image, set the image variable with the API data. That will probably be the base 64 that API will return, right? So then when I go in here and make the API call, actually, because it is a form, we need to add a button to generate it, right? We'll go on that button, we'll call that gen generate, generate. And then I go in here and I have that button. And now when I click on here, it should start generating that image. So I go on generate and actually I need to go on that form submit to then make that API call. So we need to go on that form and then I need to go on that form here and I go on submit and on submit up that form. I'm going to make that API call. Here you go. So now when I click on generate here, I should be generating an image. So you can see, let's look if that API is loading. Yeah, it's loading. So that looks good. That looks promising. Let's see if we get an image back. It seemed like we got something back. We got that image variable, but we need to update a few things when we set that variable because that data is a little bit different. So on success here, I want to set this with um, images zero um, image. Here you go. And then I got that base 64. So then let's reload that page. So now we build a super simple AI image generator that's completely unsecure. We have an API connected with Toddle and there are multiple levels why it's unsecure. So let's generate an image without a prompt. Let's see what happens. Or I think I got an error from that API back, right? Because, oh, it's still loading. And actually, yeah, oh, 
You can see it generated that image. So we have an AI image generator here. So let's look at the network tab here, because this is where we can exploit this a little bit. Let's go at the network tab here. And the network type only runs when you run something. So let's generate. We see this API call popping up in here, right? Let's look at that API call real quick. Here you go. And we can look at this API call here. Here you go. We can look at this API call. And this API call is passing some information, right? This is calling um, Toddle's API. Toddle is wrapping that. So we have it with the proxy. So that's good. But we still get some of that data here. Um, and we can look in here. This is calling the hyperbolic API. We can look at the headers. This is accessible for everyone visiting the website. And I got the API key right in here. That's a compromised API key. People will be able to call that API key and you won't even know that other people are calling it, right? That is a big issue. That's a big security issue. So what you want to do is you want to proxy that API using a different provider, even though that's not the secure way too. It's a more secure way. This is what secrets do in other tools. And this is why Total also doesn't want to do secrets as of right now, because you know they wouldn't protect you. You would think, I use secrets, I'm secure, but people can still exploit that because people can just call the secret API and you won't even know that it's secure too. But let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to um, add API endpoint group, right? Let's call that a uh, more secure API for AI. Right? That's a odd name. But now let's add an API endpoint in here and let's call that a uh, proxy. This is going to proxy that API call. We'll make a post in here and we'll save that. This is called proxy. I'll add an input here in Xano of my prompt, just like that. Let's add that input in here. We'll add a function. We'll add our API call in Xano external API request, we'll import that curl, we'll go to hyperbolic, we'll copy our curl, we'll go in here, we'll paste that curl, we'll go on import, and then we go in here on prompt, and we add the value for the prompt with the input of prompt, we'll update, that's good, we want to make that to 27 seconds, and then we'll save that. We'll publish this, and then I'm getting the same response from that API. So when I run this here, as you can see, without, without a prompt, I'm now running this on my server, on my backend. I'm proxying this through my server using Xano, the only secure and scalable no-code backend. Um, it's going to take a little bit, and I should be getting my image. And then we run this, the API keys on our server. It will never be exposed on the front end. It actually will but there's something we got to talk about. So we got that here. And for some interesting reasons, um, that API call is taking very long. So let's look at that. I got my prompt. It's probably because I haven't added any prompt in there. That's very interesting. Uh, we got that API in here, backend auto with, we got those things. Okay, let's save that. Let's publish this. Let's reload. And let's say, uh, let's make a photo of a banana. Banana. Here you go. Let's run that. And now we process this on the back end. It hopefully should work on there. But, you know, we don't want to compromise our API keys. So now we got that banana. We got that base64, right? So now, as you can see, Xano also responds our API key here because Xano, you know, also responds some of the requested we have sent. So we need to copy that crucial, very crucial. We need to create a variable and I'll just call that variable inside of Xano response. I need to go on sub path. I'll paste that in here. I'll click on define. And I just only want to return the result response dot result. And then the response here will only be response dot result. Those things here will never be exposed to the front end those run privately on our server and only we can see those things, right? So this is why it is crucial that the backend is only returning things that are safe to the front end and that don't expose any sensitive information of our accounts or that gives them access to our accounts. And then, you know, we got that response here. This is what our front end would otherwise also expect. Now just proxying this, 
That way that API key is not exposed on the front end. So now when I copy that endpoint URL here, I would now go to my API and then I also don't need to define that object in here, right? Like we have in here, because I would only need to make a prompt. So that object would remove those unnecessary settings that would otherwise be necessary. I just need to pass on that prompt input, right? Because our API here has, you know, the prompt input. Now, then I would remove my authentication token here, right? My And I would change that URL to go from hyperbolic to go to my server on Xano because I will proxy that API so that API key is not exposed. So now let's go and inspect here and let's go on the network tab. So because we can only track the network connections when the, when the network tab is open and let's call toddle, let's generate. And we see we made that API call here, but now let's expand and let's look if we see our API key in here, right? So we also wanna have it so I can, ah, uh, it's loading. So how about we make it like this? So as you can see here, I got that API request, I got that URL, I got that, you know, that prompt, I got that headers, right? And there is no API key exposed here, which is great. So people can call my API with that API key. Then I also probably want to map some things a little bit new. So let's look at on success, on image, right? I want to go to AI, data, and I've returned false for some reason. Oh, let's go look at AI data. That's interesting that it returned with false. Let's just uh, make auto fetch on again. Let's see what the API response. Let's have that load a little bit. Okay, so now we got that data, right? So now we want to go on success, just map things new. We go on AI data images zero image. And then we got that base 64 of that image. And then we'll see that image. So I just map things new, you know, should work now. But the important thing here is the API call itself. And we can just have this run again if we want, right? Here you go. But what is important is we have an API call, no API key for hyperbolic or ChatGPT is exposed. But, you know, we have that URL in here. So I can copy that URL. And to show you how simple it still is to get access to something that you're paying for is now they don't have your API key. And this is one more secure step. This is how secrets would work in a tool like WIST, in a tool like WeWeb. Toddle, the CEO of Toddle, Andreas, told me, we don't want to do secrets because we're afraid. We're not afraid of secrets. We're afraid of people misusing secrets. So this is what secrets would do. But let's go and let's create a new API endpoint. Um, uh, where do we have it? Oh, I named it so oddly. I cannot find it anymore. Uh, ooh, yeah, here, more secure API. So now let's pretend I'm a different Xano user that just found this, you know, thing to exploit. I'll make a post API, right? And I call that attack, attack. I'll save that. And now in here, um, you know, this is great if you have a public thing. So if you have a chatbot on your website that everybody will use, you can do that. I would still look for cross-origin stuff. I would make your Xano API more secure so that requests can only happen from Toddle server, right? If you use proxy. But if this is a SaaS, if this is something that where people should be paying for, which 80% of the Toddle apps I've seen are, right? For example, like Toyota on their website, they have like their chatbot and people had that chatbot make their math homework because you can always go around a prompt, right? It costs them a bunch of money to pay for other people's ChatGPT usage. So if you have something like a chatbot, like, a, you know, then of course it makes sense to have that API key public. You don't need people to authenticate. But if this is for your SaaS, you still want people to authenticate. Otherwise, they'll be able to use your product for free on your cost. So let me show you this example here. Let's make an API call in Xano real quick. Let's make an API call. Streaming API request, external API request. And let's make import curl. I'll, I'll actually, I don't, I can't import curl on this example here. So I'll make API call, um, external API request. I'll put that idiot's um, API in here, their URL, remove the quotes, uh, remove that. I add my param. I think they need a prompt, right? Let's add a prompt in here. 
uh, so let's add a set filter. I set prompt because I saw that in the network tab, right? Here you go, it says prompt, toggle. And now I have my other endpoint. I'll put toggle in here, it doesn't really matter. You can, you can use this, right? And then we'll make a timeout of 27 seconds. And now I'm using his API <laughs> without him knowing <laughs> that I'm using his API and not even on the website, but I'm using it on my server, right? So now it's loading and it will work brilliantly. You saw that, it works great. Here you go, I got my image, yeah? And the cool thing is I sadly didn't get his API key, but uh, I got the image, you know, and I can run it again. I can create another image. And the person owning this hyperbolic account, this ChatGBT account, whatever account, won't even know I'm doing it because it, it, it's calling it through my proxied API. So the lower level of security is not having a proxy at all. The next level is having a proxy that will at least, you know, keep your API key, sec API key secure. But people are still able to call your proxy API to then, you know, get stuff for free. So the next, um, you know, the next step above that would be validating some cross origin stuff that you can do in Xano using their headers. So let's actually do that. Let's go and make it a little bit more secure that only our website can call our um, API, not the attack API, but our proxy API. So for that, we need to do a little bit of trial and error, you know, so let's just deactivate those steps in Xano. And in here, let's add a stop and debug here. Here you go. And I want that stop and debug here um, to return. Actually, we don't even need to stop and debug. I just want to make one call so I get the pattern that Toddle responds. I want to respond here with my environment variable. We have an environment variable in Xano. Uh, environment variable that is called um, remote IP HTTP headers, right? I want to return HTTP headers in this API call real quick. So now in this one, I'm going to go back to Toddle and I'm going to make auto fetch off on and I'm getting that headers back. I get that IP address um, and I'm getting those things right from Cloudflare. And I wanna look at the Cloudflare worker. In this example, you see this is the forwarded host, those things. Now, I can validate if those things change, right? This is, it seems like it's a rotating IP, possibly. It doesn't seem rotating so far. But what we could look for in this example, we could look for the Cloudflare worker, that's toddle.site. If you have a custom domain, that will change, right? But we have CF worker toddle site. So now I want to validate that, that only I can call this API if it comes from total site. So I can look at my request history in Xano. I can look at that input here, at that output actually. I want to copy that real quick. And now I can create um, a variable here. Let's create a variable real quick. And we call that host. And we'll do, um, we'll take that environment variable of HTTP headers in Xano. That's how we add security. Um, and I'll just go to that environment variable, HTTP headers, um, and then I just add a filter in here. Actually, I can't add that, so let's just paste this real quick. <laughs> Probably not the best way of doing things, but it's one way. Um, not CF connector, accepted language. Um, here you go. I wanna look at CF worker. So I do, HTTP headers dot CF worker. That's how we do dot notation. That should give us the host. Let's see if that works. Let's have this API return the host and we'll publish that. And let's go in here and let's, and we got that host toddle.site. That's the host, that's the Cloudflare worker. Again, if you have a custom domain, you'll probably have a custom domain and you need to adjust your logic a little bit, but that's what we do every day at office hours. So if you wanna be, dive more deeper into securing actually the things that you do and saving enough money for those, you know, in, that you would otherwise spend it with a tax, um, you know, I would highly suggest you to uh, join office hours because this is where you get those things. And this is the things that actually can make a big difference. So we wanna look at the host, it's toddle.site. 
under here, we'll add a precondition. We could also use middleware in Xano to make it a bit more refined, but we'll take that host. It needs to equal toddle.site, right? And if it not, we're going to send an S error message of uh, F you. Um, here you go. And now we're going to save that. Now we're going to activate our other stuff. We want to make sure that this API returns the response. We're going to publish that. And now, as you can see, I can go in here, I can call that API, right? It's going to load, it's going to make that API call because now this actually comes from Toddle, from Toddle.site. Not going to say that people can't like fake that too. You need to verify other things. We do those more, you know, in office hours where it's more secure. This is a more secure way. There are still ways how you can, you know, fake that. You can fake that Cloudflare worker. You can set a fake header in there. So when you make that API call, you can just set a fake header of Cloudflare worker. Now, very unlikely that people who have not seen this video know how to do that, or they know even about Toddle, but as Toddle gets more popular and, you know, this video gets more views, people will know how to do that as well. I also want to show you how to hack in there, right? So now this worked, right? So this works if I call it from Toddle, if I go to my attack endpoint here and run this again, as you can see, it's, uh, we're going to get the error message of FU, right? So this works. We got that CF worker in that API. Now, we, there's this is now, a, again, a higher level of security. Let me show you how to go around this, right? How we can hack in there as well. We have the header of CF worker with toddle.site. We can fake that header anytime. Let's go to our attack endpoint here. Let's go to the API request. Let's go at headers. Let's push a new header in here and we'll do CF worker toddle.site. We just simply set a fake header. Now I'm going to save that. Let's publish this. And now I'm going around that. Now this API impersonates like it would come from toddle, even though it's not coming from toddle. And now I can run this. And as you can see, we're not having that precondition say, oh, you're not from toddle because it thinks it is from toddle. We're impersonating of being toddle. And now I can still call that API and I'm getting that result. Those are multiple ways how I can exploit APIs to get stuff for free as a malicious actor, right? Again, this is just for educational purposes here, but those things are dangerous things. Those things can cost you a lot of money and people can always go in there, right? If things are unknown, it's less likely that people will go in there. But if those things get more and more known, you want to make sure that you're actually on a secure path here, right? So we can val validate those things. We can fake things. There are a few things that we can fake. Those are the origins. Um, you know, again, we could still fake them, but this is why you want to add authentication because the moment we take this attack endpoint, this proxy, and we'll make it from being a public endpoint. And the way why we can access those things is because it is a public endpoint. The moment we move this to an authenticated endpoint, which then though requires us to add authentication and authentication token to make a secure call, right? People need to log in. The moment we have authentication in this, all this attack stuff will not work. We can set a fake header we can set a fake parameter. We can make it look like it's secure even though it's not. All this will not work because the user will need to log in with their email, log in with their password. They will need to have a secure access token and they will be unable to use that product if it's not secure. Now, again, if you have something on the front end, right, and you have a chat bot that helps people pick their, their, the matching size of their shoes or whatever, you probably don't need to have that much of a security aspect. I think just looking for the for some of the headers, you know, you know, that th that will solve it. Mostly, it's still exploitable. But if you have a SaaS and this is really what you make money and you want to protect yourself, you need authentication. There is no way around a secure authentication in your database using Xano. There is no way around it. You can. There are a bunch of other tools like BuildShip, like uh, FastGen, and you have authentication in there too. But usually what I found, if you have your database, and speaking of a no-coder, like Andreas Tartle is using Superbase on their backend. They run a bunch of code, they have Cloudflare workers and all that stuff, right? 
they're experts in code as well. But as a, speaking as a no-coder, as a visual developer, if you use something like Superbase, there are always ways how you can go in the back end of Superbase, unless you have like role level security activated, which most of the users don't have. So there are always ways for you to go into the back end, into the database. And then if you use something like BuildChip, right? They're, they have authentication, right? You can look for the access tokens and all that stuff. It's not native to the service. And you implementing that with Superbase is very unlikely just because it's not a native integration, right? They just do API calls to your Superbase table. And, you know, like generally speaking, if you have a separate service and another separate service, it's always harder to make sure that there are no gaps in be because you are trying to compile two services together. It's always harder to close the gla gaps in between those because they're not native. The nice thing about Xano is you saw how simple it was. I just have my authentication database. I just make authentication, you know, enable, select which database, and it always works and it's protected, it's secure. I can't go in there. It's not secure because Xano is the best one. It's secure because Xano is the only one that has everything in one place. And because everything in one place is in one place, there are no gaps. It just it's just like goes together. And this is why I really like Xano. It's, it's complete. Now, this is how, this is how you go around those things. You have to add authentication if you want to have 100% security. And then even if you have authentication, people could still exploit it, right? If they are authenticated, they can just call that API a few times. So you then also have to work with rate limiting. You also have to work with a billing approach. You would need to have their credit card on file, right? So if they start making 50,000 API calls, they're going to be charged for 50,000 API calls. And even better, they can't go across their tokens. So if they have 500 credits on their account, they can't make more API calls than 500 credits worth of API calls. That's the only way how you're 100% secure that you're not going to pay for someone else's malicious practices, right? And generally speaking, in this no-code community, in this visual development community, those things, when it comes to security, are things where we don't look at. We look the other direction, right? We don't want security. I want to look at that. But those are very crucial things. Those are very important things. And they can be the, the deal breaker, you know, the difference maker between you having a successful SaaS and having a failed SaaS and, uh, you know, getting big invoices from those companies because you, you know, you don't have um, rate limits on. Even though when you have that secure approach, you should always work with rate limits and spend caps in addition to that. But this is just my overview on security, when it comes to secure APIs, I've seen a lot of bad things coming on when you do AI APIs, which are expensive APIs, right? Inside of Toddle, inside of Bubble, inside of Wist, I've seen worse things in Wist because they have secrets and people think I just put in my API key in the secret and it's secure. It's secure, yes, until someone fakes it and makes it look like it comes from Wist and then it's not secure anymore. And it's simple to do that. Open the network tab, copy the response, you got your object, run that. And, you know, the API thinks it's whisk knocking on the door and lets it in. That's a big issue, right? You always want to make sure that you have proxy API calls with authentication. Because ultimately, as you can see here, if you have a proxy with authentication for your API providers, I won't be able to go in there, right? And then if I'm authenticated, you want to have like a user management system set up in Xano that you can see, okay, this is how much they have left. They can't, they can only call this two more times. Oh, I got balloons. <laughs> they can only call this two more times, you know, because they don't have enough tokens and I need to rebuy and we won't, you know, let them use this software more unless they buy more tokens and then they can buy. We have a lemon squeezy integration and then we get them the more tokens after they purchase them. That's how you want to do those things. Those things are very crucial, very important for security. And those are the things that we do every day inside of office hours, inside of nocodeprocode.com. This is where we specialize on. We specialize in helping you build things that are future-proof, giving you the right templates that are secure, giving you the right templates that are future-proof. And if you just follow along with the courses, follow along with the templates, copy, paste the components, click on clone with the templates, import the snippets. You have that foundation that gives you this confidence that the things you're doing are right. 
And if you then, you know, if you need to customize something in the template and you're like, okay, I don't know if what I customized actually would break some of those things. Does it make it more secure? Does it make it less secure? That's why we have the daily office hours, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. PDT every day so that you can show it and then we can look at it together and say, no, actually, if you want to change this thing in a template, you also need to change this because then I can just go in the back door and do those things. We actually had one in office hours. I hacked him. He consented, right? Just to make a point, right? And it was his, it was his application and I hacked his Xeno database and I added like, I don't know, like 10,000 fake users in this database because he didn't have proper authentication. He didn't have proper cross origin in there. And then we helped him implement that. So if security is very important to you, if you don't want to have costly mistakes, office hours is the right place for you. That's where we geek out on security. And I think you can never be too concerned about security as it can be the deal breaker or the deal maker. Um, and again, the, the template for what we had today, what we looked in today, the template that you're looking for, um, the template that you want to be aligned with to have those things secure is the tokens template. That's the tokens templates template. It includes Total, Xano, Recent, Lemon Squeezy for payments, and Hyperbolic. It's fully secure. I don't mind that access token. I got to change it anyway. Um, you can install the Total template, the Xano snippet. You got over 20 hours of courses showing you step by step how I built that template, how I set it up, sharing my thoughts behind building it so that you're not just copying, you know, clicking on copy paste, but you actually have that fundamental knowledge of how it was built, how to think about solving problems to help you become a better developer and help you think more critically about security. And if you want to join, go to nocodeproco.com. The link is in the video description and in the pinned comment. Make a little video application and you will be on the right track in building a secure, stable, and scalable web application using no code tools and visual development tools. And we're focusing on Toddle and Xano because as far as my experience and my expertise in doing this for the past years, those are the only really secure tools that empower me to make security easier than it would otherwise be. And that's a very important thing. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. And I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.